Wouldn't it be great to be able to eat everything we love and don't struggle with massive post meal blood sugar spikes? Well, Jessie, aka Glucose Goddess, claims that she found a way how anyone can do it. You just need to follow her 10 easy blood sugar hacks. Actually, Jessie says that you don't even have to follow all 10 of these hacks. Just pick the ones that work for you, incorporate them in your daily routine, and get rid of that blood sugar roller coaster. The only problem is Jessie doesn't have diabetes. These these hacks work for her, but will they actually work for someone living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes like you or me? Let's find out. And let me be completely honest with you, blood sugar spikes after meal has always been something I struggled with big time. And I still do. Although I have my diabetes under control, I'm not perfect. And there are days when my glucose spikes quickly to 200 or even 250 and only after that it goes back down. And these big blood glucose fluctuations usually leave me tired, low energy and feeling not so great overall. So when I heard about Jesse's hacks, I really had to try them out and see for myself if they actually work for a diabetic. Let me show you what I found out. And by the way, I'm not a doctor nor a nutritionist. Please keep that in mind. This is not medical advice. Let's start with blood sugar hack number 10. Don't eat naked carbs. A naked carb is any carbohydrate rich food that is eaten in isolation, like toast with jam, a rice cake or fruit juice. These are the worst things you can eat. They are pure starches and sugar, often heavily processed and they will spike your blood sugar to the moon. When I eat just one slice of toast with jam, it takes me from 100, which is a healthy blood sugar, to 250. And even if I give myself insulin with that toast, because I'm an insulin dependent diabetic, that toast will still take me from 100 to 220 before my blood sugar starts going back down. And that's why I completely agree with Jesse on this one. Avoiding naked carbs really helps to reduce the post meal blood sugar spikes. But what can we do to still be able to eat those carbs? Well, you need to keep watching because all the remaining hacks in this video will help you find the answer to this question for you. Hack number nine to avoid big blood sugar spikes after meal. Put some clothing on your carbs. When you're eating starches or sugar, glucose goddess recommend to always cover them with some fat, protein or fiber. And here are a few examples of what you can do. If you really need to eat that chocolate cake, put a big spoon of Greek yogurt on it. If you really need to eat that slice of bread, make an avocado toast or a smoked salmon toast. If you really need that white rice or noodles from that Asian restaurant, order some steamed broccoli or green beans with it. And for the main course, go for anything that's not too sweet, because that sweet taste is usually achieved by adding refined sugar of some kind. And if you want to eat some fresh fruits, eat whole fruits and add some chia seed pudding. Chia seeds are full of fiber. If you put clothing on your carbs like this, the glucose will get to the bloodstream slower and your blood sugar spike will be slower and less significant as well. When I was testing this hack, I really saw about 20% improvement in that blood sugar spike whenever I dressed my carbs the way I just explained. So I agree with Jesse on this one too. But please be careful, don't overrate this hack. Putting clothing on your carbs is a great tip, but it works best in combination with all the other hacks in this video. Now, if you watched some of my previous videos, you probably know that I was eating only whole food plant-based for quite a long time. And I know you're probably gonna ask, Tom, are you not whole food plant-based anymore? No, I'm not. I'm not that strict with my diet and I'm not that strict with myself right now at this point. Moving on to hack number eight, eat a savory breakfast not a sweet one. According to the glucose goddess method, you should never eat anything sweet in the morning and always go for fat-based or protein-based foods for the breakfast. So replace a pancake with an omelet. You don't need to spread jam on that bread. Replace it with peanut butter and so on. I attended the American Diabetes Association conference in San Diego last week. And funnily enough, there was not a lot of healthy options in the hotel where I was staying. And because I was testing these hacks, I ended up eating a savory breakfast from the buffet most of those days. A boiled egg, two slices of smoked salmon, avocado toast. I completely avoided all the breakfast cereals, granulas, 
pastry and cakes and it worked really well my blood sugar didn't spike to more than 150 on any of those days although i finished my breakfast with a bowl of greek yogurt with fresh blackberries jesse doesn't recommend eating food for breakfast though but she does allow it as long as you stick to whole food options and eat it at the end of your breakfast meal just like i did with the blackberries according to her method you should always eat the fruit in the same form you can find it in nature so no jams, no juices, and no smoothies. And it makes sense because most of these whole fruits are loaded with fiber, which slows down the blood sugar spike. On the other hand, if you drink just a small glass of apple juice, you're basically eating all the sugar from two apples in just five seconds. That sugar gets in your bloodstream within a few minutes and your blood sugar spikes like crazy. I did that once during the conference just to test it. And when I did that, although I took insulin for that apple juice, my blood sugar spiked to 240. So savory breakfast is another great hack that does work for diabetics to lower that blood sugar spike after meal. If you feel that you're more insulin resistant in the morning, you could definitely try that out. But moving on to the glucose goddess hack number seven to avoid big blood sugar spikes. Drink coffee only after you eat. Avoid coffee on empty stomach. Coffee is very sneaky. Although it has zero carbs, when I drink black coffee in the morning, it spikes my blood sugar quite a bit. The caffeine in coffee causes our body to produce certain stimulating hormones, including adrenaline and this can raise blood sugar. The interesting thing is that when I drink coffee later in my day, it usually doesn't spike my blood sugar at all. And that's why I completely agree with Jesse on this one. Don't drink coffee on an empty stomach, especially not in the morning. Moving on to hack number six, which is super powerful, and not a lot of people actually know this. Eat food in the right order. There have been studies done that showed that this hack, eating foods in the right order, can reduce your blood sugar spike from that meal by 75%. Now from my experience, this is heavily overrated. I've never seen a 75% lower hike from a meal just by changing the sequence in which I eat that meal. But I have seen about 20 to 30% improvements if I eat my foods in the right order. So here is what you want to do. Always eat veggies first, proteins and fats second, and any starches and sugars must go last. If you're having pasta with fish, broccoli, avocado and cookies, for example, start with the broccoli, then eat the avocado and fish and leave the pasta and the cookie at the end. Now it's not always practical to do exactly this because most of the time a meal is combined from all these components. But when you're in a restaurant, for example, they usually give you bread on the table before they bring the main meal. That bread is almost always heavily processed stripped out of all the fiber. The starch from that bread gets to your bloodstream very fast. So if you don't want your blood sugar to explode, don't eat that bread at the beginning. Get a portion of veggies or a salad with some olive oil and vinegar instead. This is by far the best appetizer you can have to avoid a big blood sugar spike from that main meal, whatever it is. Veggies are full of fiber and that fiber, just like the fiber in the chia seeds, which I absolutely love, will cause that the glucose molecules will not be able to make their way to your bloodstream as much and as quickly. The glucose goddess recommends to add some olive oil, vinegar, or even cheese to dress those vegetables to make them taste good and to avoid you feeling low energy a few hours after you eat the meal. And by the way, the fat in the olive oil as well as vinegar acts as another shield to protect you from a big blood sugar spike. More about vinegar in a second. Let's conclude on hack six first. I completely agree on this one too. Meal sequencing does matter if you live with diabetes. But again, please don't overrate this hack. Eating foods in the right order is not always enough. It's best to combine this hack with all the other hacks in this video. Moving on to hack number five to reduce blood sugar spikes after meal. Eat slower and make breaks between meals for a secret exercise. This hack can make a difference, especially when you go for a meal to a fancy restaurant and you know you'll be eating a menu full of carbs that will consist of multiple courses. Appetizer, main course, or even two main courses and a dessert. The slower you eat and the longer breaks you make between the individual courses, 
the slower your blood sugar will spike. You can always ask the waiter to allow for a break between the starter and the main course, and then for another break between the main course and the dessert. For someone like me who is insulin dependent and need to inject pre-meal insulin, eating slower and making breaks is really powerful because I allow for some time for that insulin to kick in and it can more effectively deal with those carbs that would normally spike my blood sugars. So this hack works really well for insulin dependent diabetics in my opinion. But I have to be honest with you. I think that for those who are not insulin dependent, this hack is not very powerful unless you combine it with a secret exercise. You can do this exercise under the table while sitting and Jessie mentioned this exercise in one of her recent interviews. I actually made a video about this exercise a few weeks ago too. The exercise is called a soleus push up. And here is how you do it. Just sit at the table with your knees at a 90 degree angle. Raise your heels as high as you can get it off the floor. Hold it really tightly for one or two seconds and then lower it back down and repeat. The toes should be touching the floor for the whole time. I totally agree with Jesse on this one too. Solius push up is such a powerful exercise to avoid that blood sugar spike from the meal or even to bring your blood sugars down when you need to. I did an experiment and I tried this exercise for 10 minutes. It lowered my blood sugar from 148 to 139. When I increased the time from 10 to 20 minutes, it lowered my blood sugar even more by 23 milligrams per deciliter. And when I did this exercise for 30 minutes, it lowered my blood sugar by 38 milligrams per deciliter. And the best thing about this exercise is that you can do it even in a restaurant under the table and no one will really notice. <laughs> Moving on to hack number four, eat sweet things only as a dessert. Sweet food is not forbidden under the glucose goddess method. Jesse actually encourages people to eat everything they love and following these hacks to avoid those blood sugar spikes. She actually admits that she loves sweets and she specifically mentioned a chocolate cake in her recent interview as her favorite. But her rule is to eat the cake or any other sweet things like whole fruit as a dessert after a balanced meal that has some fiber, some protein and some healthy fats in it. And as a diabetic myself, I really love this approach. I hate when someone who doesn't have diabetes tells people living with diabetes, you're not allowed to eat that because you have diabetes. What? We're allowed to eat whatever we want. Now I would probably not go for a chocolate cake because I'm not a big fan of processed foods, but I like to have some sweet fruits like mango, pineapple or banana. And these have pretty high glycemic index, meaning if you eat them, especially on empty stomach, they will spike your blood sugar very fast. But if you eat them after a balanced meal and cover those carbs with Greek yogurt, some nuts or chia seeds pudding, which is my absolute favorite dessert, you can reduce that blood sugar spike at least by a half. It really does make a difference. We still have three great hacks to get to, but before we do, I just want to remind you that if you want to connect with me one on one or if you just want to support me, there are two ways you can do that. The first option is booking a coaching session. You can book 45 minutes or 90 minutes with me on this link. I will put it right here. The second option, which is more affordable, is my Patreon. When you sign up as my patron, you get direct access not only to me, but also to all my bonus content. Again, I will put the link to my Patreon right here. Right now, there are 20 last spots available in my VIP Patreon group. And once these are taken, you won't be able to sign up as a VIP member again. All right, moving on to hack number three to avoid big post meal blood sugar spikes. Drink vinegar before you eat. Jesse claims, and that's based on scientific studies, that if we have one spoon of vinegar mixed in a glass of water before the meal, it can reduce the glucose spike from that meal by 30% and also reduce the insulin spike by 20%. If your body still produces insulin, that is, because mine doesn't produce any insulin. I'm a type 1 diabetic. Now, the reason why vinegar is so helpful is that it contains acetic acid, which slows down how quickly food breaks down into glucose molecules. And so the glucose molecules don't go into our live stream that fast. Jesse also says that the acetic acid tells the muscles to basically soak that glucose 
from our bloodstream when it arrives there. And that's why vinegar should have such a positive impact on the blood sugar levels. Of course, you don't need to drink vinegar on its own. You can include it in your salad dressing, which will also get that fiber in your body. And I approve of this hack as well. From my experience, vinegar doesn't really reduce my glucose spike by 30%, but I've definitely seen like 10 to 15% reduction in that blood sugar spike. So again, this combined with the other hacks is getting really powerful. Moving on to hack number two, stop counting calories. <laughs> I'm not joking. Jesse doesn't really want you to think of food in calories. It's because calories don't tell us anything about what's actually in the food. Calories also don't tell us anything about how we will feed after eating certain food. They'll tell us nothing about how the food will impact our physical health, mental health, and glucose levels. And I kind of agree. I look at calories, but they are not really that important to me. There can be two different people eating the exact same amount of calories a day. One person eating whole foods and the other person eating fast food. The person eating fast food will have a lot more blood sugar spikes. They will have more cravings. They might be more exhausted, not sleeping as well or even have mental health issues. Now, if you are trying to lose weight, of course, it might be helpful to still count calories while eating healthy. But let's be honest, living with diabetes, we already have to count carbs. We need to calculate the insulin dose. We need to do so many things. Do you really want to count calories for the rest of your life on top of all this? I don't. Moving on to the glucose goddess hack number one. This one is really powerful again. And after that, I will share a hack of my own too, which I think is super important, especially for people with diabetes who are trying to reduce that post meal blood sugar spike. But first, Jesse's hack number one, which is move after you eat. It doesn't matter what you do, just get moving. You can go for a walk, clean your apartment, play with the dog, go to a gym, do some solos push up. Jesse's coming up with all these suggestions. Just don't crash on that sofa, although it might feel tempting after a good meal. When you get moving, you will simply not allow your blood sugars to spike because your muscles will be taking away that sugar from your blood. And that's why this is so powerful. Again, I completely agree with this hack. It's really effective for us living with diabetes as well. But there is something that can be even more effective for insulin dependent diabetics. And that is my bonus hack pre -bolusing. Let me explain what it means and how you can do it. Just look at your blood sugar line on your continuous glucose monitor and think of this line as a rope. Whenever you eat and those carbohydrates enter the bloodstream, they start pulling this rope up and your blood sugar is rising. Insulin, as well as all other hacks we talked about today, pull that rope down. The problem is that most of the time, people inject insulin and start eating right away. And when they do that, the carbs typically get into the bloodstream much faster than the insulin. And the blood sugar spikes. By the time the insulin kicks in, the blood sugar is already too high. And if that happens to you all the time, you might want to inject your insulin 10 minutes before you eat or even 20 minutes before you eat. The exact timing really depends on what kind of insulin you use, what kind of food you eat, and how many of the other hacks in this video you are doing. Quite honestly, the perfect timing might be different for different people. You should definitely talk to your healthcare professional and maybe even experiment a bit to find the sweet spot. Now, having said that, all the hacks I talked about in this video reduce the post-meal blood sugar spike. Some of them more, some of them less. So if you take any medication for your diabetes, please don't go crazy. Implement these hacks one by one. Take it step by step because you don't want your blood sugar to drop too low too fast. Now there is one more thing that can lower blood sugar more effectively than anything else. It's actually my secret weapon when fighting diabetes. I will tell you about it in this video. So go ahead, click it and watch it next. I will see you there. Ciao.